Good day for wherever you are and welcome back to another episode of Below the Curve Gaming. So today we have our second game involving the Steel Phalanx and the US Ariadna and it's Unmasking, which you will see on your screen in just a second. So we've played Unmasking before in the channel and it was a really good game. As a recap, it's a game where there's three consoles, so we have one here in the centre then we have one inside this building, and my glamorous assistant will lift the lid. And then we have one over here inside this building, as we can see here. There's then three HVTs deployed, and one of them is the real target, and the other two are decoys. Once you've activated the control panel, you get a guess at which HVT is the real target, and then you have to try and assassinate them. So. It's quite a crowded table, so there's going to be some tight fire lanes. It'll require some clever manoeuvring and probable use of camo tokens and combat jump. Just to sort of stymie this a bit, there is an exclusion zone 16 inches across in the centre of the table so that you can't land a hacker directly onto one of the consoles as hackers get a plus three willpower bonus and get to roll two dice, pretty much guaranteeing even the most lowly of Panoceana hackers a relevant chance of turning on the computer. We're using a new scenery piece. Uh, this whole board pretty much is courtesy of Toby, whom we got the Shock Army of Contus Mental from. And we have the uh, Brew Jet. And if you're Scottish, you might get the reference from the Iron Brew adverts for a few years ago. Um, it's gloriously painted in the Neo Terra colours. And so it's in the Steel Phalanx deployment zone. I won the willpower roll on a crit, on a 15, which might give away my, away my lieutenant some bot. So I've opted to go first, as I feel that this will give me the best chance of actually being able to kill some HVTs. So Ben chose deployment zones and deployment order. So he has the deployment zone over here with the small pile up and the bike shed. And I will be deploying first. So we'll be back in just a minute. So here we have the Steel Phalanx ready for their second outing and hopefully somewhat more successful than the last game. So we've changed the list a little bit. We've dropped Hippolyta, we dropped the Hoplite, which I was not particularly impressed with, dropped the Agima Marksman, which was always on the card, sadly, and the Thyreos. In has come Ajax, and this is using the Maximus Aristeria model in his Thermopylae getup. And Hector, Homerid champion, as well as Nise Alke, the Thorakite NCO. So what we're hoping for is that Nise and the Thorakite will provide a slightly more solid firebase using the Feuerer Bach. And she's got a multi-rifle as well, and she's got NCO. And then Hector is going to be my problem-solving piece. Unlike Hippolyta, he's just a little bit tougher. He's got a few better rules. But more to point, he's carrying a plasma rifle, which is going to hopefully devastate the US with their lack of BTS, forcing them to take two saves against every hit. And he's got Tinbot, which I don't imagine will be particularly important. But he's also armor five, two wounds, he's got an X visor, a whole host of special skills. So he's going to be my big problem solver. Ajax and the Myrmidons will be my sort of in your face unit to hopefully sort of put Ben a wee bit on the back foot. We've got our three HVTs. We have Helen of Troy. We have the flight pilot who's jumped out the brew jet and the Kouage delegate who clearly was being transported by the uh, panel when they were shot down and had to call for Steel Phalanx's help. We've also got a Dactyl Doctor using the Sophotech model with a Yud bot. So she's probably going to have to follow the Myrmidon team around a little bit, but she can also be hopefully be used to pick off the HVTs. We've got two net rods to supply me with some orders. So I will show you my deployment in just a second. So here is my deployment. Now it wouldn't be one of my videos without forgetting something major. And I thought I had it all covered until I remembered 
that I actually had a Samke missile drone in the list. So this is a print, 3D printed model from Unit 9 because I don't currently own any of the left drones. So it's going to anchor my left flank. I remembered Stratagos level 1, so Hector will be turning his lieutenant orders, I believe both of them, but possibly just one. I'm going to read up on it while Ben's deploying into a regular order. It also allows me to hold back two troopers, so I've head rolled back Hector and my Dactyl Doctor. We have the Thorakite fire team, so we have Nisei Alake, who again is an Infinity model, some 3D printed bits. I've managed to hopefully get her order from the US, but it'll be a wee while before she arrives. We have the Thorakite paramedic here, and we have a Thorakite forward observer here, and then the fire back. Then we have Ajax, and we have two Myrmidons. So the plan is the Doctor is going to deploy over here just behind Ajax, which will allow me to come round to here. Thorakite will probably have to go for the centre um, console, but they might try and go for the one in here instead. And the Ectra Moss will drop down and land outside the exclusion zone and then foot slog across to whichever one he is left, basically. Hector will probably deploy in the centre and just get a bit in your face, um, firing past cover, shooting out windows, that sort of thing, just to keep Ben pinned down. And then, if necessary, we'll come out a door and introduce explosive close combat weapon to people. So I'm pretty happy with the setup. The only thing that remains is to pick the real HVT. So I've decided after careful deliberation, and the fact I'm getting old, I can't even remember if I said earlier which one I was taking or not, it's going to be Helen, because obviously I'm playing Steel Phalanx. I'm hoping that the deployment of the Kawaji delegate and the pilot quite close to consoles might be enough to tempt them to go for those. Now that could be a bit disastrous because it is potentially giving away victory points, but we'll see. So we'll be back in a moment with Ben's deployment and then after that with turn one. Hello, it's Ben and this is my US Ariadna Ranger Force for unmasking. It's 299 points, 5 SWCs, and is 15 orders across two pools. Uh, first group is 7 orders in an irregular order. There's a fire team duo, which is a blackjack with AP HMG, and the 112, um, who's using the wild card option to uh, move into the fire team duo. I'm kind of hoping this might be something a bit different from what I've used in the past. It's the first time using the blackjack and I wanted a model that could kind of power forward with a big gun to hopefully take on some of the heavier hitting options that I thought Martin may be playing, the likes of Ajax, um, Hector, etc. I'm not convinced that it'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of them, but it should hopefully prove a bit of a deterrent and potentially move up to one of the HVTs and um, take one of them out. It's not a specialist, um, however the 112 is obviously a doctor, so it will be able to push the button if I do get close to it. I then have a war driver, um, which is the Six Sense boarding shotgun hacking device version, and a dozer and Uralan total reaction uh, remote. I then have what will be four camel tokens, um, which is two camel tokens due to the decoy, um, with a hard case frontiersman with a tactical bow and a rifle option. So it's two points more, had a few points left over. Um, it proved quite successful in the previous game, so I wanted to try it out again. And then I have a foxtrot with sniper rifle and shock mines, and then a foxtrot with boarding shotgun. So quite a few camel tokens in that first order pool. And then group two um, is a fire team core, which is Rosie um, with light rocket launcher. Now she's got forward deployment, which I forgot to uh, use last time. It's only four inches, but uh, that'll be the max I can deploy forward anyway due to the exclusion zone. And she's also a specialist operative, so able to push some of the buttons. 
and then have three grunts. Now this is a paramedic, the one with the rifle in the air. I've got a lieutenant with a rifle grenade launcher and then I've got a forward observer at the front. And all of them are rocking rifles. Um, probably not going to be the most impactful but I wanted a range of specialists um, that potentially I can uh, guide the Uralan with, with the forward observer and a paramedic to hopefully get some of the models back into the fight if I need to. Normally I would have had the 112 in this uh, fire team. I do have a second 112 model so I could have brought two of them into the list. They are availability too but I opted just for a grunt paramedic. Um, then I'll have the unknown ranger kind of leading as it were the fire team. Now it's the AP Spitfire version. Um, now he's also a specialist operative so quite a lot of uh, specialist operatives in that uh, fire team and then I have the airborne ranger um, which this game I'm going to be using the rifle uh, version which is uh, not a specialist um, but does have an assault pistol which I thought would be quite useful. Last time I used the submachine gun version so I wanted to try this one out and then I have a uh, yeah again I had a few points left over I think it's more expensive for this version. Um, then I've got the Devil Dog team, which is just the cheap version, the chain rifle and AP heavy pistol. Um, so the um, plan is that they are going to kind of be a foil for the Blackjack and 112 um, as a kind of hit piece that's going to be able to move up the board, hopefully take on the HVTs. Obviously with the chain rifle I'm not having to worry about rolling to hit, so might be able to take them out with a lucky template uh, once they're unveiled. Um, so I'll come back shortly with my deployment. So just in addition to the force, here's the three HVTs at the front. Um, so my kind of 3D printed HVT model, then Uhahu and the dismounted Maverick. And for the game, I will use Uhahu to be the actual HVT. So here we are at the end of my deployment. So starting with the HVTs, I have over here a decoy. I have a second decoy and an HVT. And then starting with the actual models themselves, I have a camo token here, which is a Foxtrot sniper. I have the fire team duel of the blackjack and the 112. I have a decoy um, prone and just hidden around this doorway if you can see just under the emergency glass is the hard case. Then I have the war driver. I have the Uralan total reaction bot with the dozer beside it. Then moving into this building I've left the roof off just to show these. I have the fire team core, Rosie, who is forward deployed at the front, and the unknown ranger, the paramedic, the lieutenant at the back, and the forward observer. So we're going to push on through this building, hopefully activate the console that's inside this building here. Over here, um, I have a gap, which, unless something major changes, will be where I put the devil dog team, which I've held back. And then I have another camel token up here, which is a fox drop with boarding shotgun. And then held off as a airborne ranger. Mm. So that's all my deployment. So we'll come back once we've done the final models and then we'll move on to turn one for the Aleph steel phalanx. Um, so here we are at the end of the held back models. There's been a slight amendment to my deployment as the exclusion zone was further out than I remembered. Um, so I've pulled this uh, camo token slightly further back. Um, so Martin has held back too many models in my opinion, but anywho, um, and has combat dropped his two net rods in. One failed its fizz roll, so it's against the table edge. The other one is further forward. Um, Hector has been deployed beside these stairs with his tin bot um, and also there is the Doctor which is just behind 
uh, Ajax model or Maximus, which is the Sofatech, and his Yudbot over there. I had kept back as it advised the Devil Dog team, which I've deployed at this site here. So we will now come back with the end of the Steel Phalanx turn one. So it's the end of the Steel Phalanx first turn, and it was a very quick turn actually. Started with Ben taking two orders out of my pool two, as Hector added two to my pool one with Stratagos. There wasn't that much point really in him taking out of that. So this left Ajax, the Doctor, and the drone with a bit of a deficit in orders. We started by manoeuvring Ajax and the fire team up towards one of the control panels and round about two of my HVTs. They were followed by the Doctor and the Yudbot, with the Yudbot being in base contact with one of the HVTs as well. Over on the far side, the Sam K drone bot took a shot at the Devil Dog team. I don't know why I bothered moving it up actually, because it's put it into a poor range band. Unsurprisingly, it missed and they successfully dodged. With nine orders in pool one, I had the fire team and Hector as the only things that were going to be taking orders. So Hector first moved into this building and across into the so, partition. So he engaged in a firefight with a tractor mule, losing a wound, and so that was his second order. His third order, the plasma rifle hit the tractor mule dead, scoring two hits. Ben failed all of his saves, and so the tractor mule was rendered unconscious. The dozer around the corner actually passed rolling two 16s and a 17, only taking one wound, and so was dropped unconscious. The Thoracate fire team moved round. They cautiously moved round the corner, not using cautious movement, just I didn't spend the full movement, because I didn't want to be standing in the open and provoking air rolls from the devil dogs unnecessarily. Then they made a blitz up here, uh, shooting at the devil dog team with Nisei's multi-rifle. Totally forgetting, of course, the devil dogs have total immunity, so the multi-rifle was probably a better choice than the Fury back anyway. I also forgot about all the fire team bonuses, but never mind. We took a wound off the Devil Dog, and then we moved into this building here. The Devil Dog got two free chain rifle shots against Nisei, who tanked both hits in a 15, getting into contact with the control panel. Now Nisei, being a specialist operative, went to push the button and completely missed it, and probably has unplugged the panel at the back instead. So that's the end of the first turn. There's a few things that we missed, unfortunately. We'll be back in a moment with Ben's second turn. We'll be back in a moment with the US Ariadna first turn. So here we are at the end of the Ariadna turn one. So I had five orders and an irregular order in group one, and I had five orders and two irregular and an impetuous in group two. So I started with the impetuous phase, which the Devil Dog moved up and the peripheral went into the building. And the peripheral got knocked unconscious by Nessie and the Devil Dog got killed but did knock two out of three of the Forakite who were outside unconscious. Um, the Forward Observer or Hacker, I think it turned out to be, and a paramedic and the Fuhrbach saved. Um, unfortunately, I took multiple nanopulsars and pulsars to the face and was removed. So then I started pouring some orders into the fire team. Um, so I moved up through the building and with Rosie, Light Shock and Nessie and took her out. Unfortunately, I took a nanopulsar down the corridor, which hit four out of five of the fire team. The unknown ranger dropped to no wound incapacitation, and Rosie dropped unconscious. I chose not to activate Dogged and spent an order. Uh, first, I had to re establish the fire team with a command token, then spent an order making the paramedic the fire team leader, who moved up and paramedic Rosie back into the game. I then spent an order, I think two orders in total, to activate the console. I failed to whip in the first 
instance with the Unknown Ranger. It was his tactical awareness order for that one. And then I used a regular order where he uh, succeeded in uh, pressing the button, which then unveiled the HVT, which was around this corner, to be a decoy. I moved out of the building and traded some shots with the Forakite. Unfortunately, nothing happened, but I did manage to take out the Same, Samade remote that was here, dropping it unconscious. Um, moving into order group one, I started by spending two orders on the Fireteam Duel of the Blackjack and the 112. Uh, the blackjack moved up, uh, double move, there was nothing that could see it. And then it kind of poked round this advertising board. 112, as you can see, is snuck a wee bit further forward. And fired at uh, Maximus, or Ajax, four times. Unfortunately, um, I was beaten by a dodge roll, and he has moved worryingly close. So that might have been a slight mistake on my side. I spent a further order in that pool to full uh, move or full order climb this camel token onto the building. Um, I then spent my last two orders on the camel token that was here, which moved round the building and unveiled itself to be a foxtrot with boarding shotgun, which double tapped the Forakite uh, with Fureback and the HVT. Um, the HVT passed its saves, um, but the Forakite was killed. And then my final, final order um, from Group 2, which was spent on the Unknown Ranger and Fire Team, it moved up. He um, managed to withstand shots from Hector, which I hadn't twigged, could see through this wee um, window. And he took out the... Uh, HVT with his um, heavy pistol. So that'll score me one victory point for taking out one of the decoys. Um, so we're about to move on to the Steel Phalanx turn two. So it's the end of the Steel Phalanx turn two and after the damage Ben inflicted last turn I have to say I wasn't feeling particularly hopeful. I only had five orders in pool one thanks to two net rods Hector and then his two orders from being applied due to Strategos and then I had only four orders in pool two. So we started by combat dropping down my Ectromos hacker using its own order and it landed right over here about half an inch to an inch outside the control zone of the fire team. I then activated my Dactyl Doctor who made a mad dash using Ajax's silhouette to block line of sight to her. Using two orders, she got into the building and flicked on console and praying to the mighty AI, uh, asked if it was the HVT that was standing over beside the dactyl. It was, so the dactyl immediately took another order and so it shuffled up, fired his chain rifle he has plus one burst chain rifle, killing the HVT, taking out Rosie, and taking down the paramedic. This was what could only be deemed a success. Galvanised by such excitement, uh, the Doctor decided to move and catch up with Hector a bit. Hector, seeing the Doctor on his her way, probably ran away, uh, gunned down the foxtrot through the window, we had totally forgotten, or I had totally forgotten, about suppression zones in the windows. Um, so we're just playing that they were, all the glass has been knocked out by the impact of the Brew Jet landing. I moved into this building, tried to assassinate the Unknown Ranger, who promptly crit me with a Spitfire. So Hector, who's directly under here, is currently on no wound incapacitation. Not ideal. The Ectra Moss moved up discovered to his delight that Ben's fire team were facing the wrong direction, so fired his plus one burst chain rifle into the room and took down the grunt with the grenade launcher. The forward observer is still standing, but this was obviously a huge bonus because it removes the plus one burst from the unknown ranger in the fire team and would reduce Ben's AROs. 
However, I was out of orders in the main pool. Lesson here was take more net rods. Um, no, it is not. Ajax and the Myrmidons, this time a reference to an 80s hair metal band, I'm sure, moved up. Ajax has burst five from his combi rifle, which I forgot and only awarded myself burst four. But he's got plus one damage. So he put two shots into the blackjack. Ben very sportingly failed both saves despite needing a seven or better. And so that was rendered unconscious. The 112 had the audacity to crit Ajax with a shotgun shot, and so Ajax took a wound. So at the end of the turn, I have three victory points for killing the correct HVT, and Ben has one for killing one of my decoys. So we'll be back in a minute with the end of the US Ariadna turn two. So here we are at the end of the Ariadna turn two. I started to turn and lost the lieutenant due to the grenade launcher grunt getting knocked out. Um, so everything was on to irregular orders. I started by spending the irregular order on the fire team through the tactical awareness, which I don't believe breaks the fire team to use that. So um, if it does, put a note in the comments below. So I moved into silhouette contact with these cars and fired at both the Erkdramai hacker and Hector that's in this building. Um, I managed to take the hacker down to unconscious um, and I think Hector saved. Um, I then moved over to the war driver who spent its irregular to move up. It kept out of line of sight of Ajax who was over by the um, building here, uh, the kind of silo type thing. Um, and so I stopped just shy of the corner. Mm. I then activated the 112 who tried to light shotgun Ajax. Unfortunately, he succeeded his dodge and moved into contact with him. Um, this gave me a wee bit of a dilemma because I wanted to activate the camel token that was on the top of this building. So in activating the camel token, I moved it to reveal the... Uh, Foxtrot with the sniper rifle and took a shot at Ajax. It allowed Ajax, because he could draw line of sight to her, to be able to CC attack the 112 as a reaction and any misses I would have would hit the 112. Um, I did manage to hit Ajax once and the 112 once. Um, Ajax critted because he goes down to CC 24 because he effectively with his martial arts as CC27. So the minus three for the surprise attack wasn't that beneficial. And the 112 took four saves, I believe, five saves. Um, and passed two, but died. Um, I took a wound off Ajax and put him onto no wound incapacitation. Um, so slight benefit from my side, but still not ideal. Um, the two camel tokens, which were one in this corner and the other one was inside in the doorway, um, revealed to be a hard case who moved out and shot Ajax and he succeeded in dodging. Uh, then I spent an order on the unknown ranger who fired at Hector and nothing's really happened, I think. I then spent my final irregular order in this group using the grunt forward observer who moved out and could grad the ectromoy hacker just to remove him it's a long shot that martin would be able to in one turn get his doctor all the way over there but it was in the doorway and i thought i may as well remove the model just in case um, and i also brought on the airborne ranger um, with sub uh, with rifle and assault pistol over here it's just out with the deployment zone using its combat jump um, parachutist, sorry, to come on the side. Uh, this prompted an ARO from the Myrmidon because it could see just over the uh, kind of crate here, cargo container. So it dodged um, and moved slightly further forward. Uh, so that takes us to the end of the Ariadna turn two and going into the Steel Phalanx turn three. It's currently three victory points to one but we'll obviously score for activated consoles at the end as well. 
So it's the end of the steel phalanx, turn three. I used my command tokens to drag Hector and both of the net rods into pool two, so that I had one pool that had nine orders, which was the four models in pool two already. Hector, the two net rods, plus his Stratagos um, ability. So firstly, I moved the Myrmidons round. I took control with this chap here, came round, and unfortunately I had to sacrifice him, but did double tap the Airborne Ranger with a chain rifle, which spelt the end of her. Um, I was gunned down cruelly by a combination of her and the Fox Trot Ranger on the roof. The Doctor moved round and on a couple of orders managed to gun down the War Driver. Hector moved up, attempted to take down the Unknown Ranger. I thought I had a crit, then realised that actually I was at minus six, not minus three. And so I took a single round back, which I predictably failed to save because it was AP and Hector, who was on no wind incapacitation, died. However, that wasn't going to impact the outcome of the game. Um, I couldn't resurrect him because he was on no wound incapacitation. I maybe should have moved a doctor up, but never mind. I then activated Ajax and Surviving Myrmidon. I took down Hard Case first. Then I took down the Foxtrot Ranger. And then, because he's not a specialist operative, just moved Ajax up to here so that I can maybe uh, deal with the Unknown Ranger just out of principle and spite. So it's the end of my third turn. I currently have three victory points. Ben has one. We've each got activated one console. So I believe that's going to be as many victory points as I can get. So it's just over to the Unknown Ranger and Ben's two command tokens for the final US turn. So here we are at the end of the Ariadna turn three. I started the turn in loss of lieutenant for the second turn in a row because the uh, war driver had been made the lieutenant at um, the end of last turn. Um, I spent my two order tokens to cancel retreat on both troopers. Yeah. So I had two irregular orders for the unknown ranger, his tactical awareness and his irregular order and an irregular for the uh, grunt forward observer. So I started by moving the grunt into the building and whilst he was out with eight, I fired at Ajax with his rifle. Um, I managed to deal two wounds to Ajax um, from the, or two hits to Ajax with the rifle and took two wounds off him, which he was already on no, no wound incapacitation. So that took him out. However, I took a nano pulser and with my sparkling BTS save, I failed and died, uh, or dropped unconscious. Um, this left just the unknown uh, ranger to try and move what was a conservative probably 15, maybe 18 inches, um, to try and get into contact with the button to press that, and even then that would have taken me to one victory point down. So... Um, I moved up and exchanged fire with the Myrmidon for my second order because the first move took me to about here and then the second move took me or the second order took me into about here. I fired my heavy pistol at the Myrmidon, it chain rifled me in re uh, return and I failed my save dying and, but the Myrmidon dropped unconscious. It should technically be here, but uh, Martin's just removed the model. Um, so that takes us to the end of the game. Currently on the board, there are two net rods, a Dactyl Doctor and a Yudbot um, is all that's left of the two forces. So a bit of a bloodbath. It finishes with six victory points to Martin, Three for taking out my HVT designated target in Uhahu. One for having the same number of activated consoles, at least one. Um, so one each for that. And then he gets two for his designated target not being removed. Um, so I end on three victory points. One for uh, unveiling and killing a decoy one for killing more decoys than Martin, and one for activating the same number of consoles, at least one um, per player. 
Um, so finishes with six victory points to three and quite a, a successful game, I felt, for the Steel Phalanx. So we'll come back with our roundup of each of the factions and what our thoughts are. So this was a far more successful game this time for the Steel Phalanx. And I think there's a couple of reasons for it. Firstly, not necessarily requiring the full Gambit Specialists was very beneficial because of the lack of the classified objective. Also, I felt that the list was just a bit more resilient. The Hoplite hadn't brought anything to the list in the previous game, and being my only big gun, I tried to use it to anchor a battle line in a way it just clearly wasn't suited for. I do think the Hoplite has some uses, but with what I have in my collection right now, it's just not quite there. I think Ajax, with his no wound incapacitation and higher armour, was a far more effective point man than Hippolyta had been in the previous game. Both of them will go on an absolute murderous rampage, but I think for what I needed the force to do in both games, Ajax was a better choice. The Doctor gave me a more reliable backup, and while she never made a single doctoring roll, she was there in case, and if I'd been a bit more canny, I could have saved Hector. I chose not to because it was the last turn of the game and he was dead or alive, he wasn't making any impact on the game at that point, so it wasn't as much of a problem. I was somewhat disappointed in Hector in that in the entirety of the game he took down a tractor mule and a dozer. However, Hector isn't a ranged character, the plasma rifle is very nice, but it's more of a deterrent, I think, than his main function. The Stratagos was his best contribution to the game because it meant that I had those orders to spend in the first turn on the Thorakite team and then in the final turn when I transferred him into the separate combat team. It gave me the orders to spend on Ajax and his uh, fire team which swung the game in my favour because it removed Ben's, well all of Ben's models really. The Thorakite are good, I used them very very poorly. I didn't twig that Ben had an entire fire team stacked down a corridor. If I had, I would have been a bit more sensible of my orders. I wouldn't have wasted time trying to push the button in turn one, and I would have then hosed that fire team with the nano pulsar, hoping that their silhouettes blocked each other from firing back as they got further down the corridor. Also, I don't know why I advanced them when I actually had a clear shot at the devil dog with a fire back in a decent range band where I might actually have hit instead I brought it too close and when I finally did bring the Devil Dog down it took the fire team with it. The Ectromoss hacker was absolutely fantastic. I would actually consider maybe two Ectromoss if I wasn't running Hector because then I could take a cheaper model using uh, Nise Alakai as my lieutenant and then a second Ectromoss just with a gun to land and lay some hurt down. They've got an amazing set of skills. You do have to remember they're only armor two, and obviously you can't land in silhouette contact with any form of terrain, so you do have to be quite canny, but I do like the versatility they bring. The drone, there's Sam K drone, Samek, we're not quite sure how it's pronounced. However, it was very poorly used by myself. I moved it forward, taking it from two inches outside a range band into four inches into one, which lost me my plus three to hit. And I would have actually landed the shot on target, I think, in the first turn, if I had kept it where it was. Now it was on the antipod, so that wouldn't have much outcome in the game and the antipod itself didn't do anything, but it might have deterred Ben from some of the decisions he made. So. Again, something I just have to get used to. I've not used any missile launcher drones so far in any of my lists, I don't think. And it's a weapon that I don't actually have that much access to across my model range. Um, The tankos are the one that tend to use it the most, but the tankos have the benefit in the JSA of being in a harry. So the extra dice tends to cover for one poor range band. Net rods are fantastic. The only problem with them is they're too redundant models and when it gets down to the fact that you've got Hector and one wound effectively and then net rods aren't doing anything if you don't want to be cavalier with the model they're giving the orders to then again they turn up 
turn out to be a bit of a dead order. But at the same time, they give you that fuel for a big fire team. If they win, for example, Ajax's group, then they would allow Ajax and the Myrmidons to do a lot more work. I think in subsequent games they will be, given that Hector turns his orders into regular orders. There isn't the same need for them in that combat group. So overall, I was happy with the army. On a more open table, and this was a lot more built up than I actually intended it to be, but on a more open table, I think the lack of a truly heavy weapon like an HMG or two would actually really hurt me. This army had only, I believe, four SWCs, which was a Fauerbach, the 0.5 for the Ectromos hacker, and and I know I said it a couple of times, there was no forward observer. It was a Thorakite hacker because I needed to push the buttons. Um, and then the drone itself. So that was my four SWCs. I could easily, if I jiggled around the points, have ended up with another potentially hacker or 0.5 model and an HMG. And I think against a four and a more open table or somebody who I thought was bringing bringing bigger armor, I would need to do that. I was very pleased with the force, so it performed well and I've enjoyed the steel phalanx so far. So that was a bit of an eye-opening experience for the US. Um, I had felt on turn one by the end of that that it was going really quite well. However, the tables turned quite quickly in Martin's favour by the end of turn two, his turn two. That is, it was looking quite um, grim from my point of view. I think there were a few issues I encountered that with maybe slightly slicker play um, or maybe a slightly different force kind of um, composition or placement of of the models I could have maybe overcame. I think um, it didn't help going down to loss of lieutenant for the two turns in a row, start turn two and then start turn three. Although by the, by the start turn three, it was kind of over by that point. Um, I think perhaps bringing on the airborne deployment of the uh, airborne ranger earlier could have been beneficial, but it was looking quite um, difficult in turn one to have actually have got much use out of her. I didn't really want to bring her on on the right side of the board because I'd pretty much cleared that out. Obviously, I wasn't particularly um, expecting the Arctramai to drop down at that side. I wasn't sure if there was one on the list, it has to be said, um, because Hector and Ajax are quite pricey points wise um i was kind of expecting what was on the board to be the kind of full list um i haven't played them enough to quite judge all of the points um for martin's list as yet and um, this being the second game against them but potentially i could have brought her on at the left side of the board in much the same position that i had brought the uh, brought her on in turn two and that might have just dissuaded Martin from pushing as far forward on that side albeit really the game was lost on the right side really in that the um, likes of the Arctramai dropping down to take out Uhahu um, meant that I was kind of losing the the yeah, points, uh, victory points at that side it is, with unmasking, it's an interesting mission because it does come down to that luck of the whichever HVT you unveil first, um, potentially in this game where the buttons were only pressed twice overall, then if you don't hit uh, lucky and pick the right one, um, then you might not get that second chance to, them, to switch um, one of the consoles on to then unveil something so that kind of swung the battle in Martin's favour being able to unveil and then drop uh, have the drop troop beside the correct HVT to then take that out and did make it yeah quite um, quite a tough tough break to come back from and um, the blackjack which was the only 
a new model um, for this uh, game. And I think I just got quite unlucky with failing two saves before then it really got to do much. I kind of would have liked to have tried a wee bit more with it. It's not the most expensive model in the scheme of infinity at 38 points and 1.5 SWC, which is quite pricey, I suppose. Um, but the 38 points in the US force is quite considerable because really it's only the Unknown Ranger that's going to be more expensive points-wise than that. So it was quite a point sink in the list. Perhaps I would have been better by dropping it and perhaps like the extra grunt it would have been. And between the two of those, that would have given me about 50 points that I could have then added in likes of a Harris of um, Minutemen and Marauder or something similar. Um, it was an experiment though to see kind of how how it goes really, how um, it performs. I had literally just painted it this morning because I'd uh, woken up and thought, yeah, I fancy giving that a shot. So the army list got slightly tweaked and yeah, whipped out the paint. So it still needs a wee bit of a finish off. Um, the base will need kind of touched up because it was quite quickly put together. Um, so going forward, I've still got a bit of US to paint up. Um, I want to get the... Uh, bikers all done so I can have a bit of a faster moving force. They are very cheap points wise though, particularly the Desperados, so I'm not quite sure what I would then be able to take to then kind of counteract that because the US um, profiles I think in general are more on the cheaper side. Taking stuff like the um, Desperados does mean that you're then having to almost fill your points elsewhere, but perhaps getting some of the Marauders painted up, um, or more of the Marauders, I've got two more of them, and then a few of the Minutemen would potentially give me a core team that's quite of a, uh, points heavy, that then would counteract to kind of seven points, I think it is, for one of the Desperados. Um, I have also just based all my French, um, so the Margovinians, so I need to start painting them as well. But I kind of want to get the US painted up first, so I can move on to having further options for the Ariadna games. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Um, as ever, any suggestions, questions you may have, drop in the comment section below, and please like and subscribe. Thank you.